In this video, I'm gonna share with you 10 things that you can do on your Mac computer that you probably didn't know about, whether that's a MacBook Air, a MacBook Pro, or a desktop like an iMac or the new Mac Studio. Stick with me until the end of this video. I reckon there are gonna be some tips in here that you weren't aware of. Okay, let's get into it. Did you know you can have multiple desktops on your Mac? They're known as spaces, and essentially the way that you can use them is to have different applications open in each space and then bounce between the spaces as you need to. Let me show you what I mean. Here on this desktop, you can see that I've got the notes app open and I've got the mail app open. And between the two of them, they're taking up all of my available screen real estate. Now let's say I wanna move over to Safari for a bit, but I don't wanna to have to mess about with minimizing these apps, perhaps because I want to bounce between them all. What I could do is enter mission control. I'll do that by tapping the F3 button and then pressing this plus icon in the top right of the screen. That creates a new desktop or space. And you can see down here at the dock, all of my apps are still open. They're just not showing in this space. Here, I could open Safari up and I can zoom to make it take up the entire workspace. But then when I want to bounce back to what I was doing in notes and mail, I just hit F3 again and click on desktop one and I'm back to the previous desktop. If you wanna move an app between spaces, just use your mouse or trackpad to click and drag it, then tap F3 and drop it into the space you'd like to move it to. You can have loads of these open, which is massively useful if you're operating on a smaller display like a MacBook rather than say an iMac. To delete a space, just tap the little cross icon next to the space to get rid. You can switch between open apps using a handy little keyboard shortcut. Press and hold the command key on your keyboard and with that still pressed down, tap the tab key to move between open apps. To move back in the opposite direction through the open apps, instead of pressing the tab key, press this button instead. Letting go of the keys with an app highlighted will bring that open app to the foreground of your display. Or instead of letting go of the command key to open the app, tap the Q button to close that app without you having to go into it first. If you've got multiple instances of a window open, like the Finder window for example, follow the same steps to highlight the Finder icon, then tap the up arrow on your keyboard. You can then use the left and right keys to pick a specific instance of that application and hit enter on your keyboard to select it. In the previous tip, we had a number of Finder windows open and I showed you how to use the keyboard to select them without using your mouse or trackpad. Well, you might want to shut them down, but clicking the little cross icon on each of these is a bit of a waste of time. Hold the Option key on your keyboard and tap the Close button on the app window. This will close all instances of that particular app without closing the application itself. And this is of course most useful if you're dealing with something like multiple instances of the Finder windows, for example. When moving your cursor through a passage of text, I'm sure you already know that you use the up, down, left, and right arrows to move your cursor around. Well, did you know that if you press and hold the option key while you're doing this, you'll move one word at a time instead of one letter at a time. And if you press and hold the command key, you'll move to the beginning or the end of the line. Command plus the up key will move you to the beginning of the text. Command plus down will move you to the end. You can then use the shift key in addition to these commands to select text. So shift plus the arrows will select a character at a time. Shift plus option plus the arrows for a word at a time. Shift plus command plus the arrows to essentially select everything. Getting good at using these different commands can make moving through and reviewing large documents much, much easier. If you receive a lot of emails with attachments, which you then download and store in a folder, even if it's just your downloads folder, it can get confusing when you need to reply back to someone in relation to a document, as you might not be able to remember who sent it to you. Here, I've got a document that I received in an email, which I then downloaded to my downloads folder. I could of course open mail, then search for the name of the document and try and find it that way. But even easier is to highlight the document, click on the share button here in the window, and you can see down at the bottom of the share menu, it says reply to, and then the name of the person. Clicking on this will open an email up with the document attached, ready for you to reply right back to that person. Now I believe for this to work, you have to receive the email in mail. I don't know if this works if you operate in Gmail in the browser or another third-party mail app. If you get this to work that way, drop me a comment and let me know about it. 
But I really like this. It's so easy to get overwhelmed with large amounts of downloaded documents, and this tip will help you keep on top of things. Spotlight Search is, in my opinion, one of the most underrated tools on the Mac, and I think part of this is because Apple don't talk about it nearly as much as they should. To access Spotlight Search, tap the command and spacebar, then begin searching for whatever you're after. So if I wanted to open the app Moom on my Mac, I could type in Moom, and there's the app. I just hit enter to open it. If I want to search for a file, I just type the name of the file in, and Spotlight will come forward with all suggestions for the file. Notice that I've typed in the term media kit, and not only does Spotlight return files, it also shows me folders, possible web searches, lots of different things. It will include emails in here, apps that you haven't downloaded but could download from the App Store. It's actually a really seriously in-depth searching tool once you start to get into the habit of using it. In fact, I'll show you something cool with Spotlight Search in the next tip. You can use the Spotlight Search function to perform conversions. So for example, if I press Command and Spacebar to open the Spotlight Search and type in $300 and don't press anything else, you can see that the search bar will assume that I might want to convert that into my local currency, and so it gives me the GBP amount. If I type in £400, I get the US dollar conversion, with links to then convert to some other currencies. This works if I type in measurements like inches or centimetres. This works if I type in a mathematical question and can often save you from needing to call up the calculator. This can be used for spelling and definitions. This can be used to track flights by inputting the flight numbers. This can be used with sports teams. There are no doubt more things that you can use it for and if you use it for anything else, drop me a comment and let me know what that is. This next tip is kind of a follow on to Spotlight Search, but let's say that we're looking for a specific file, but rather than opening the file, we want to know where it is and view it in its folder. So here, I've typed in a file name and Spotlight has found the file that I'm after. If I were to hit enter here, the file would open, which is not what we want. Instead, with the file highlighted, I'm going to press Command and R on my keyboard, and the Finder window will open the relevant folder, and I can now view the file in its folder, rather than simply opening it. By the way, a bonus tip, if you find this File Path window useful, you can switch this on by going to View, and ensuring that Show Path Bar is toggled on. I also do this for Show Status Bar, which is the part underneath that gives me information about the space usage on the current drive. A quick tip this one, but you can unlock your Mac with your Apple Watch. Just go to System Preferences, then Security and Privacy, and ensure that use your Apple Watch to unlock apps and your Mac is toggled on. So long as you've got your unlocked Apple Watch on your wrist, when you sit down to open your computer, it should unlock automatically without you having to input your password. The final tip is something that I had no clue about, but now use all the time. I'm sure you know that to copy something, you use the Command C button on your keyboard, and then to paste, you use Command and V. But what if you've copied a file, but then realized that you actually intended to cut the file, but you're already in the folder that you plan to move the file to? You could of course paste it, but you then have to go back to the original location to delete the original file. Or you could press Command, Option and V. This takes the item that you've got on your clipboard and pastes it to the new location whilst deleting the original, essentially moving it, even though you copied it rather than cutting it. Super useful and a tip that I now use all the time. So there you go, 10 things that your Mac can do that you might not have known about. I've got a load more tips that I want to cover, so there will be a couple more videos just like this one coming in the next month or so, so do keep an eye on the channel if that sounds good to you. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.